today, and I thank you for these two men who have decided to publicly proclaim their faith in you. Yeah. Pray, Lord, that you might honor their commitment and their covenant here today, that as they go down and as they come up, that they might live a newness of life that you called us to live in, that you might regenerate them by your Holy Spirit, that you might call them to ministry, that you might help them, Lord, to rise to the place that you have created them to be. Thank you for them as their men, men of God, and that your image is going to form them. I pray that you might help them, Lord, as we go forward, that your spirit would completely fill them and direct them from now forward in Jesus' name. Amen. All of these fears <laughs> around my heart. I know you see me. I feel you're with me. Jesus, you are I cannot see. Hey everybody. hey everybody, we have two young men here today that are dedicating their life to Jesus Christ through baptism, the picture of dying to themselves, their own plan, their own lives, their own thoughts, and giving themselves over to the Lord Jesus Christ, it's a public testimony, it's something that Jesus left us, he himself was an example of it as he went to John, and John said, listen, I, I, I should be baptized by you, and he says, we need to do everything in accordance to the law, so Jesus submitted himself to baptism as a picture for us, not because he needed anything. Amen. For us, it's a public proclamation turning away from the old life and turning towards Christ. First one is John Falber. Before I met Jesus, I was obviously an infant, uh, and, I, and I was a toddler. I was born and raised into the Roman Catholic Church. And um, when I met Jesus, I guess it was when I was baptized, uh, about two years old. Uh, might have been one of the years, one and a half years old, because I remember there's a picture from my baptism. I'm dressed in white and I'm standing next to a table and I'm pointing at my older sister. There's a picture that my grandparents had, which is funny, you're talking about the favorites. And my elder sister Rosary was my grandparents' favorite. And uh, I remember I would nickname her Yaya. And she nicknamed me Papito. <laughs> so <laughs> going through uh, growing up in, in, in Catholic school, grade school, I learned a lot about Jesus. I also took more sacraments. I had a sacrament of communion, um, eventually confirmation. And I learned a lot about Jesus. I always kept my faith. And I went to church throughout my Catholic uh, school days. And in high school, I might, I might, I might, I might have gone to church every Sunday. You know, nobody's perfect. And uh, I, always, I always had faith and I always prayed. And God and Jesus always took care of me. I, I've had problems in my life, whether it be with school issues or family issues, when it, when it came to financial situations. Uh, my father was emotionally disabled. And my mother, she had a heart attack when I was a teenager. And uh, God was there for us, and he, I was leaned on him. And there was one time I almost took my life because I was so depressed. And again, God was there for me, and Jesus was there. The, the thing that I used broke, so I was saved. And I've been saved a lot of times, but I can't keep you here all day. Um, one of the best things since I met Jesus was in one of the greatest things is in the year 2000. Now growing up, even as a, te as a teenager, I wrote songs and lyrics with Jesus and a lot of faith-based faith poems and songs. But the best part of my life in getting to know Jesus and growing closer to him was in the year 2000, my cousin Michelle and her husband, Chris Buckley, 
They used to go to Calvary Church in Oldbridge. They invited my sister Blanche and I to go to a Christian retreat. And uh, well, we're like, well, how much is it gonna cost? And believe it or not, my sister and I, $500 for everything. The airlines, food, lodging, you can't even get that near that today. So we're like, yeah, sure. So first time we were both out of the country, you know, we landed in Germany, then we got to Austria, and it was in March of 2000, so it was a beautiful scenery of snow, white nature, and I was enjoying the majesty of God's splendor, the mountains, and every morning we would have worship. Breakfast, and then we'd do our own thing. We all took, took different uh, activities. So one of my fondest memories in getting closer to God and Jesus was my sister Blanche, a bit of a wild one, <laughs> but she's also a born again Christian. Um, she's like, child, let's let's go cross cross country skiing. I'm like, uh, well, I already tried skiing and I kept falling. You know, I was like, but she's like, no, no, this is cross country. It's easy. You just go like this. You know, it's like walking or you know, you're doing exercise. Okay, no problem. So we're in a bus and we're going up one of the mountains. And as we're all sitting in the bus, the bus is going higher and higher and higher and higher. I'm like, Blanche. I think they said this is cross country skiing. She's like, well, I thought it was. So they finally park at one of the peaks in the mountain. And we all get out. And the bus driver and the instructor that was there, they open up where they keep the uh, equipment and they drop snowshoes all over the place. Oh. Right, but at the time, I was, I was afraid of heights. I really was. Oh, I'm like, oh, Blanche, oh. what did you get us into? So anyway, we did it. Um, God was with us. We had fun, and there was a point um, where we all went up the mountain, and I, st I, I, I stopped to pause to look at the majesty and wonder of God's creation. And I thank God, and I thank Jesus for the splendor and glory, and it was like a, it was like a spiritual intervention. And they were all up already there, and I'm like, I, I stayed behind. And my sister Blanche is panicking, John, are you okay down there? I'm like, I'm all right, I'm just enjoying the view, you know? So I'm like, you know, basking in the sunlight, look at the snow, and I see about maybe 25 feet away from me, a mountain goat, a white mountain goat. So she says the instructor down to get me because she thought the mountain thin air was affecting me. So he's like, come on, John. I'm like, no, I'm fine, I'm just, just, come on, let's go. So I go up there, and she's like, John, you're all right. I'm like, I'm okay, man, relax. So. We go up and uh, we get to the top and there's like this little tree stump there. And I sat on it. And I thought to myself, thank you, God. And, you know, put this tree here so I can sit down. So then we finally get a few more feet up and there's a peak and you can look below, look across and you see the village, villages down below. And I saw, literally saw like three trees. It was like Calvary. There was one in the middle, one on the left, and one on the right. And I was like, and I'm there with my sister, and they're all like looking and taking pictures. I'm like, Blanche, do you see that? She's like, see what? I'm like, no, really, do you see that? And she's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's great. I'm like, yeah. And then uh, to this day, when I mentioned about the goat, and I wrote a poem about this experience, by the way, several poems. Um, to this day, she tells me she never saw the white I really felt that the Holy Spirit came into me. When I got home, I was so full of joy and light that uh, it really, really made me more aware of my blessing and the grace of our Holy Father and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And today I'm looking forward to being baptized again. And uh, I will do my best. Ever since my wife passed away last year, I will do my best to serve the Lord in any way, shape, I can. Amen. So, <clears throat> I thank you all for witnessing this. And I love you all as my family. Amen. And God bless you all. Jesus, you
I'll give you warm. <laughs> Jamie Calderon. Addiction, lust, I mean, I was, my future in-laws and my son is here, so I'm not going to get into details, but <laughs> there were some bad times. And Jesus has come to me many times, saving me in a moment when I, when I feel like giving up, whether it's a commercial or a light flicker or something. But there was about a, a year and a half, two years ago, I left part of the lust. And I remember I, I was torn. I, I always knew that. I was meant to be with Kristen, but I just couldn't get the sins of the flesh off me. And I just, I, I was begging God to please come and, and, and show me what to do. Like, uh, enough of the free will, like I need guidance. And I remember I just, I felt such a strong presence over me that I couldn't even lift my head up. And I just felt the great power in front of me. And, and through my, my head, he came and he spoke to me and like gave me not directions, but just enough that I knew exactly where I should be. And from that moment on, I felt a weight lift off me through my fiance. She's given me more Jesus than I could Amen. think of or do on my own. <laughs> and that's all I got. Brother, I know that you know that you're a sinner and that you need a Savior and you've realized that Jesus was God's gift to you and that you're going to give your life to Him, that you have given your life to Him and this is a testimony before this crowd. Is that your testimony? Yes. Amen. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, we baptize you in the name of the Lord. Free swim now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, <laughs> 